Hey guys, um, how are you doing? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, so guys, I wanted to get on here very quickly because there's something that I saw. So you know, I did a video the other day that said he let his llama pastor put spit on his face. He let his llama pastor put spit on him. And um, I did a teaching on that. Now I had, I had seen a video, it was another video, not about that, but that was a clip that was in another video. And um, I spoke on that. And so guys, I have no idea who this person is, never seen him, never heard of him before. And maybe to some, y'all will think I should. Now someone commented and they mentioned the person's name and whatever, but I still don't know who that is. And I believe this is one of the reasons why the Lord does not have me frequenting the internet. He does not have me frequenting and following any specific pastors, especially like really big names, apparently that this person is, because it's important, guys, that when we see certain things, we see the action and not the person and not who their back, not their background, but the action, because that's what it gets down to. Now, from what I see, the person has since apologized for their action and all that good stuff. Um, and that's about as far as I'm going to go as far as that is concerned. But what I want to talk with you all about is what I saw in the wake of all of this is um, when he apologized, apparently, because his actions went viral. So the, the thing that he did I'm talking about People Magazine spoke about it. It made it into papers and it went viral and people were really just turned off by it. And so he apologized for it apparently the next day. But now when he tweeted and his apology, I looked at the post underneath it and I saw a lot of blue check marks. And what blue check marks are, are these are what you're going to call like the heavyweights and, and people normally have money, okay? Blue check marks on Twitter is someone that, I mean, they don't have to be super rich, but they are definitely what you will call the heavyweights. Some I recognize, others I did not. Some I recognize from, because they've been around since the old times, okay? So you can't help but recognize or know the names when it's said. But I want to share something with you that some of them said. I kind of did not write it verbatim. I just wrote that basically just give you a gist of what some of them wrote. So he has apologized. He tweeted that. Here's what some of the, the blue check marks folks said. God will bless you this week. That was one. Another one says, no one can unseat you from, from where God seats you or where God places you. So no one can unseat you from where God places you. Okay. Um, let's see. Another says many times it's people understanding us, but we underestimating many times it's people underestimate. It's not people underestimating us, but we underestimating ourselves. Okay. So let me read it again. Many times it's not people underestimating us, but we underestimating ourselves. And there was more to that, but I'm just giving you pieces of it. Another says, God has you in the palm of his hand. Another blue check mark person. Okay. And another says, God, the Lord shall preserve you from evil. Now, let me tell you what the issue is. I think it's good that this person apologized. I'm not here to, to look any further or do closer scrutiny on why he may have apologized. It did go viral, okay? It went viral and there was a lot of uh, backlash about it. But one thing I will say, he did not get on there and start to justify. I mean, he was talking about some stuff. He spoke about when Jesus used spit, but... I can say overall does not seem as if he was uh, trying to justify it. I'm just going to leave that there. However, what what is what I see, not only does these individuals, what you would call the heavyweights in ministry with the blue check marks, but also celebrities with check marks. And then also just 
just, you know, your average person that gets on Twitter make comments. Something I see a lot with a believer is an enabling behavior. This has nothing to do with anything other than he did something wrong. And I'm not saying that in the tweets they need to be dogging him out, but this stuff of um, the enemy can't unseat you or whatever, that's why pastors make those kind of mistakes. And that's why they don't, you know, they will continue to do more things because it has nothing to do with the enemies coming for you or no one can unseat you. You did something wrong. So the what could have been a better comment, which is, well, we all make mistakes. Good that you learned from it. OK, or no, that wasn't a good move, but it's good that you apologize. Let's move forward from it. Don't linger in the past. Don't beat yourself up about this. You've apologized. It was not a right decision, but we learned from it. Not this when people are doing wrong, they need to be told that they're wrong. Now, someone may say, well, how do you know that they did not apologize or, or did not really speak to him behind closed doors? Well, the message still matters because the thing is, it has nothing to do with just this person and what they do. But the fact of what is a lesson that's being taught? What What is the view of the world? When you're tweeting something, in my opinion, in that situation, it can't all be you're patting this person on the back and saying no one's going to unseat them and all these different things because it's the, it's, the, it's the coddling within ministries with someone of that caliber, okay, apparently that he is. What about this man? No one said, you know what? Yeah, I couldn't imagine what that man felt would spit on his face. But it's all about bigging him up and, and it's all about him and saying no one can touch him and no one can unseat him and anything. No, he kind of almost unseated himself because then this stuff happened and everybody saw it and he apologized. Okay. In my opinion, this is just me speaking. There's nothing that you need to know about when it comes to spit and putting it in somebody's face. That's just basic knowledge. That's a no, no. Regardless of how much you may have been in the middle of your te teaching, that right there, the minute you start to spit and rub your hands together and even just the way it was done and it was horrible to see. And there are certain things that we just know is just, it's unacceptable. So there's no excuse for it, okay? However, with that being said, with that being said, pride can cause you, can build up a momentum to cause you to say and do things that you cross a line. Because let me tell you, nobody should have had to there didn't need to be any tweets. There never need to be any sort of um, uh, video going viral about this person. But the Holy Spirit, when you get ready to do certain things, he tell you, uh-uh, no, don't do that. That Don't do that. So it's important that even though you have the gift and the anointing and you have, you have the gift of speech or whatever, you have to always gauge yourself. And because sometimes when you're used to being up front in, in front of other people and when you're used to being the center of attention, sometimes there's a level of pride somewhere that can cause you to go over the line because the Holy Spirit never makes mistakes. The Holy Spirit never does something and he goes, oops, oh, we went too far. No, something happened. Now, what that is, this person will have to examine that on his own and work on that. And prayerfully, the apology, the apology is genuine and it's not just, oh, you need to fix this, okay? But what I looked at, guys, was if you look down, most pastors, I, I want to turn around. If it was that gentleman that did that to that pastor and he tweeted and said, I'm sorry, I feel that there would have been a lot more, hey, listen, you just don't do those things. It's just, you know, it's not right. Not necessarily berating the person, but telling them the truth because that's how people grow. 
But you find individuals, I've seen this before, where uh, people who have done wrong, whether they've slept with someone, when they've been accused of some sort of violence, or they've been caught doing something they should not do, what begins to happen is the religious leaders will gather around this person and all they're tweeting is, oh, you're under attack, God's got you, all these different things. No, you cannot just do things like that. I mean, you can, it's your choice, but that's the problem. And that's why people don't learn. And so when they're in a place where they've made a mistake, that person needs to go to God fully humbled and not being coddled and not being told that, oh, you know, that uh, God's got you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This had nothing to do with anybody. There was no, no devil in the room. They're looking, the only thing I can say when they say no devil, nobody can unseat you is the natural reaction to the public and to people saying this was disgusting. And so now instead of addressing that, it, it, it is all about who's trying to unseat this person. No, no evil shall befall you. No, something was done that was wrong. It grossed out people. It's whether it was him or anybody else that did it, it would have been the same thing. Why is he exempt? He is not exempt from that. And so what needs to happen is when people get those wake-up calls, I call it, when these leaders get a wake-up call, hey, you went too far, they need to be able to go before God and search themselves and get that behind closed doors chastisement so they don't do that again. Because a lot of times when people, when something like that happens, in a public setting, there has to be other little areas and little things that maybe he was not doing it on set. Um, not saying he's spitting on people, but sometimes there's something within a person. It, it does not mean he was abusing anyone or doing anything like that, but sometimes there's something there that maybe God was dealing with him on to kind of tweak or to fix something. And then the sting kind of you know, took momentum and went in this direction. And so it's all about coming back to God, figuring out what's up, what's going on. And as other believers, we're not there to dog anybody out and say, oh, you're a terrible person. But these tweets, as if he's under attack, he's not under attack. He's, he's getting the consequences for his actions. So again, nothing about the gentleman, nothing about hey, you know, yeah, that was kind of gross, but we learned from it. I gave you those examples. None of that. It's as if, oh, you're you're under attack. So we minimize the incident. We minimize what happened to this person. We minimize the absolute health risk that was there. He said that he apologized to the gentleman and all of that, blah, blah, blah. And he made a, a light joke. Uh, saying, well, when Jesus did a miracle, the person got to see, but you know, when he did, a, when he put the spit on the person, the guy was bald before and the, the guy was still bald afterwards. In my opinion, that was distasteful. It's not the time to joke. It is, he was the, the guy was already in, this is my opinion. That guy was already disgraced and embarrassed by having to stand there and allow you to do that. And now you're making ball jokes and how before and after. Now that may have been something just to kind of, some people when they, they feel bad about something, they kind of maybe laugh or make a joke about something. But again, now we know he's bald before and after. So that was not a good idea. Now, someone may say, who are you to judge? I'm not a judge, but I am here where I can speak an opinion and speak we let me tell you what a judge is and, and people need to really listen judging is me telling you what you deserve but we as believers of god we have the authority and it is we we can speak and say something that is not right we can address it we can speak about it and hopefully everybody grows from it so there is this cop out among believers of if you speak about something, you call, you're speaking and saying, hey, listen, this was wrong. You're judging them. No. Then why do you chastise your child? If you want to correct your child, mom, you're judging me. Don't tell me what I did wrong. You're judging me. 
Don't tell your boss what he, he did wrong at work or your supervisor. You're judging me. Don't call the don't call the customer the place that you ordered something from and say when they did something wrong. You're judging. Don't write a review about poor service. You're judging them. Okay? But here's what's more important, guys. I have no idea who this man is. I don't know who he is at all. I still don't know who he is. And that's really important. You know why that's important? Because then I was able to just see exactly what was done and see it for what it was, not who he is and who he has touched in the past and his ministry. Because people get, they get, um, basically, a lot of times people become groupies. They become, they're like fans. And so when the person does something wrong, they'll make excuses for it. Why? Because perhaps they've heard his teachings. Perhaps they've, they've, they have been delivered by some things that he had done. They read his books. He knows different people. He's in the circles with other heavyweights. So people are going to go, oh, that was nothing. No, that's not how that works. You see what happened. It was wrong. We address it. He apologized. I pray that it was sincere from the heart. And now we also have to not just be, oh, it's no big deal. It is a big deal because he put something on a man. Whether it was a boy or a man, he placed spit in a man's face. He was humiliated, whether intentionally or not, in front of different people. And one has to question where a pastor goes off thinking that's okay. And what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're in front of people all the time, you must watch your heart because pride will kick in and make you think you can immediately do something in the heat of the moment because you're the pastor and you're on fire and you're the bishop and you're doing different things and you humiliate someone. Some do it on purpose, some in the moment. You've got to rein in the pride and self. And that's going to come from learning the lesson of what has happened. No one telling you how great you are and what God's going to do because God did not tell him to do that. And in him doing that and getting the backlash, more than likely God is getting his attention and saying, hey, come on back in. Let's figure what's going on here. I can tell you where you went wrong. And then he grows from that. And then when he apologized, just apologize for what he did, all that good stuff. We don't need to know. You don't need to share with us the details and making a comment about his head being bald and everything because there's nothing funny about what happened. And we shouldn't just accept it because, oh, this is this person. We all make mistakes. We all can make mistakes. But when we make mistakes and things happen, we have to be able to own it, feel it, go through it. Yes, my brothers and sisters, you may say what you need to say, but there needs to be correction. And then you can also give encouragement. Not all, oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's not enough that you say, oh, I chastise them behind closed doors. Put something up front because the world is watching the church. And now people who are prone to want to be combative, they will be like, oh, so you expected him to just, them to just dog him out? That's not what I said. But you're going to one extreme to the next. Anyone who's commenting, they can still give chastisement and still encouragement at the same time. Actually, yes, that was wrong. I can't imagine what that man felt, but it's good that you apologize. Yes, sometimes we can take some missteps and hopefully, you know, and we're look and, and let's continue in ministry or something like that. Now all this stuff as if he's being attacked. He's not being attacked. He was not being attacked. He did something wrong. End of story, period. And this is why so many people end up falling into idolatry because what happens is they think because this person has done this uh, and, they, and they, they have a great ministry, then they can do no wrong. Listen, Jesus did not make mistakes like that. And the Holy Spirit does not make mistakes. When that happens and something like that happens, what we saw was someone that for some reason at that moment 
there's a part of that individual somewhere in his heart he felt he could do that to another person and that's what you look at and that's what he needs to address because it was a person next to him and the way he did it he he didn't just go to to what still would have been bad he went to get deep down snot coal chest foam all of that brought in his hands rubbed it then put it over his eyes and then was dripping off and then he got his hand and just he did this thing with his hand just to smear his face even in the way he did it so prayerfully he did really repent from that i'm not here to oh he's repented no this is something that i know the lord has laid in my heart to speak about and i'm going to tell you about it the lessons that we learn from those things we pray that we never do anything like that but also the coddling and all the heavy weights coming from out of nowhere to say, oh, this person hasn't done it. It's too common. There's people who has been accused of sexual immorality. There's people that's been accused of pedophilia. There's people who are doing things. And then what happens is these guys come together and then they're all like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's not. And they never learn. And this is how a lot of people end up going, will end up losing their soul in eternal damnation because anytime they do something and it's exposed, only God can expose you now. And so that happens. Then instead of them being humbled and learning, here comes the, oh, it wasn't that bad. They're picking on you. They shouldn't say that to you. You're still great. So now the flames are, the fans the flame of pride is being fanned and the person like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. I don't know why they're saying that anyway. So they never learn their lessons until the next thing. I'm not saying that's the case with this person, but it's a common practice among these pastors that are celebrities are on this level. They're always coming forward with just excuses. And then it becomes an issue of it's an attack. No, it's not. So, guys, it's important that you take you, we take our head out of the clouds, out of the sky. You have to see that person as a regular person. If it was anybody else, there would be all kinds of there would be the same reaction. But because it's him, what these big wigs start to do, they come to his aid. So then, if you're seeing oh this this. This big celebrity is backing him. This person is backing him. This person's backing him. Then us little ant folks needs to stand down. But I'm here to tell you that David was a little man who brought down Goliaths. So it doesn't matter if all the Goliaths come out and be like, we're with him. What God says, God opened the door that this thing occurred. And it's a lesson for him to learn. And I hope that he humbles himself and goes from there and I hope that man who now is all viral forever that he can recover from it I pray that he's nice he's healthy and let's all learn from it as well all right guys